All right, Richard Skinner from the Inquirer is here. So is Jeff Butch Hobson from Bengals.com. Butch is an unabashed Red Sox fan, but that's okay. Unabashed. He's a good <laughs> baseball man, so we'll ask you our poll question, guys. Uh, you just saw it a second ago. Once Matt Latos comes back, what do you do with Alfredo Simon slash Tony Singrani? Skinny. Um, you know, is, is, well, Tony Singrani's thrown the ball pretty well, but somebody has to go. And I don't want to put him in the bullpen. I know fans think that's the easy solution. To me, he is still a starting pitcher. He's still a really good starting pitcher. On a lot of clubs in this league, he's your third or fourth starting pitcher. But to me, if he's not going to start, send him down to Louisville. Butch, what do you think? Maybe we can foist Stephen Drew on you guys. If you guys hate <laughs> Gozat so much, uh, maybe we could get Simon for uh, Stephen Drew. I, it's got you got to keep Simon in the. I mean, in the rotation, he's your number two guy. Right now, he is until Latos works his way back. No question. Maybe there's trade bait out there. Get and, and that's possible too down the road. I mean, yeah. something always seems to happen with rotations. Very rarely can you get through a season with five, or right. even in this case, maybe six starters. You can't do that. All right, let's do some Bengals draft stuff. First time we've had an opportunity to talk with Butch since uh, the Bengals made all of their selections. Let's. Uh, why don't we just start off with the elephant in the room, A.J. McCarron, the fifth round pick. <laughs> you know, you only have an opportunity at seven, maybe eight draft picks with a compensatory pick. You don't like to waste them. I don't think they just took a flyer on A.J. McCarron for window dressing. At the very least, Butch, he's insurance, and if not for this year, down the road, is he not? Well, I mean, he's, uh, he, is not, uh, he is not coming in to replace Andy Dalton. Right. He's not even coming in to replace Jason Campbell. Uh, they see him as a developmental guy, and maybe... He can be a backup, that solid backup that they haven't seen to been able to develop in, in, in 20 years. So, I, I, you know, McCarron is a nice pick at that, but he's a fifth-round pick. He wasn't a first-round pick. He wasn't a second-round pick. You know, and Skinny, and a lot of this talk is generated because Andy Dalton hasn't yet won a playoff game. If Andy and the Bengals beat the Chargers last year and lose a tough one at Foxborough the following week, you could live with that. We're not even having this discussion. No, but, but you still might draft A.J. McCarron sure. no matter what. I mean, you still need a third quarterback. You still need a developmental guy. Um, again, this is a little bit of a, of a dart throwing contest to some degree when it comes to quarterbacks. But let's not forget, who was Tom Brady? I mean, you, you watched him at Michigan. He was a nice guy at Michigan. Nobody knew about that. A.G. McCarron might be Tom Brady. He might be nobody at the end of the day. He might be Eric Kresser, for goodness sakes. Yeah. But the, the point is, you don't have to rush this. You don't have to hurry this. You can look and go, hmm, we either have something or we don't. And it doesn't have to be tomorrow or a month or in the, in the, in the training camp, for goodness sakes. I, mean, I really like McCarron's intangibles. I mean, there's a guy, if he, well, he can wins. survive, I mean, if he could survive it's, an 73 touchdowns and nine interceptions in three years in, in, in a major league. That's, those, those numbers are pretty and darn good. And savings on your back. And All the time. And playing SEC defenses yeah. week in and week Windows out. Windows are smaller. I mean, yeah, he, I, he was good. And winning big bowl games against great teams, no question about it. All right, while we're on the uh, topic of quarterbacks, uh, the talks out there about Andy extending, A.J. Green extending. Um, what are you hearing, Butch? You're very close to the situation. Well, I think, I think if anybody's going to get extended first, it's probably going to be perfect. But I think yeah. that's going to be a while, too. But I think, uh, it, you know, if the man in the corner office, being Mike Brown, if he wants his quarterback under contract, he'll get his quarterback under contract. I don't know when there will be a date, but I, I would expect that, that that will be done before the first kickoff. All right. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Let's go through uh, kind of the, the order here of the draft picks. Dark Quez Denard from Michigan State, tremendous cornerback. Didn't play a ton of great receivers in, in the Big Ten. Didn't play a ton of great quarterbacks in the Big Ten. But... This kid is a big-time player, Skinny, and they really wanted him, and we're really lucky that he slipped to 24. Yeah, I mean, if you look back at some analysis, he was a, he was a 13th, 14th, 15th guy maybe taken in the draft, and they needed that position. No matter you know what happens um, to Drake Kirkpatrick, no matter what happens to Leon Hall, whether he goes back to corner or maybe moves to say, what other that stuff, you still needed that position addressed, and they addressed it with a guy that I think w was probably rated higher for that. I, I have no problem with that. I thought it was the right move at the right time. And was it their Butch best player on the board at the time? No question. I think he yeah. was like their guy or something yeah. and, uh, and and the thing is they upgraded you know everybody talks about they didn't do anything over the offseason upgrade well they just upgraded their defense right. with a guy who's probably at some point he's going to be you know he's going to be getting a lot of snaps this year I'll get to Jeremy Hill let me ask you about the center Bodine uh, you know with Kyle Cook gone this kid may have a chance. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think he fits what Paul Alexander has been looking for, what this team has been looking for, a big guy who's got an anchor. He's not Guy Check. He's not Jonathan Luigs. He's a, uh, uh, a guy who's been proven in the ACC. He's got the build uh, that, you know, I mean, Alexander compares him to Matt Burke, who is a six-time Pro Bowler. And they lose uh, Michael Johnson in free agency, so it's, it's likely Wallace Gilberry takes those first training camp reps uh, on that end of the line. Will Clark, though, Margus Hunt from last year, 
can these guys be the future of the team if necessary? When you've done what the Bengals have done here in the last few years, what you're drafting now for is you're drafting for development. Marcus Hunt was drafted for development. He was not drafted for anything other than that, maybe to block a kick on extra okay. extra uh, extra points and fielders last year. But he was drafted to see, all right, this guy's an athlete. Let's see what we can develop. Same thing to some degree for Will Clark. And that's what, when you start to have success in the front office, and they haven't had it for a long time, but they've done such a good job here the last four or five years. Now you're starting to pluck guys and say, oh, let's try to develop that guy. We don't have to reach, we don't have to grab, but we can take a guy that we don't have to rush. And, and Will Clark was that, Marcus Hunt was that, for goodness sakes. Right, and, and Butch, I love the Jeremy Hill selection because here's a guy you can clearly run between the tackles if you don't want to do that with Gio. Now, Gio demonstrated he can, but, but Gio not for 25 can, carries. I mean, exactly. you still need two backs in this league. And, and Gio can be utilized in space now. Gives them a lot of versatility. That pick was Hugh Jackson saying, we're going to pound it. Yeah. But that pick was saying, we are not going to put everything on Andy Dalton. That pick was saying, we're going to do some play action. And I think, the, to me, the thing I, I like about it is the big back returns. Uh, they haven't had a, a guy. Because Jarvis isn't yeah. a big guy. Everybody thinks yeah. he's, a, he's between them, but he's not a big guy. Jeremy Hill's a big but guy. I'm talking about a, a guy who weighs about 220 right. pounds right. And, can, and can break it. Right, right. You know, they, haven't had a two, between. they haven't had a 200-pound guy have a 50-yard touchdown since Rudy Johnson 10 years wow. ago. Wow. So I think that's a hill gives them that something they haven't had. If you can, in 10 seconds or left, give me the one guy from this class who five years ago from now were saying, wow, that was a good pick. I think it'll be Will Clark. Will Clark. I'm going Jeremy Hill. I love him. I think he's a great player. Butch, Skinny, thank you. Thank you, Mike.